So today we have got a slightly different video. Nine times out of ten, my videos are either fun stuff, car stuff, or designed for business owners already. And I had a little thought the other day, I was chatting to some people on Instagram who weren't quite business owners yet, maybe tried a couple of things, or maybe they were too young to think they were able to actually go out and do something. So today I'm going to be talking about the top four easiest ways that you can go and make your first thousand pounds online now if you're already a business owner and stuff like that, you may be looking at this going right to i'm making 10k a week i'm making 100k a month just now an extra thousand pounds what does that mean to me maybe you want to send it to a younger member of your family or whatever but this is for the people out there whether you're 18 you're 25 you're 30 whatever age you are you're looking to make some money online be a bit more digitally nomadic it's not a service you need to fulfill in person and by the way we've got some set criteria for this i'm going to assume in terms of skills you have zero okay expertise i'm gonna assume you also have zero and money to invest to be able to go and start making your thousand pounds by the way this isn't like a quick snatch and grab i'm not gonna be telling you to go and find people giving away free couches on facebook marketplace and then flipping one gum tree for 100 quid this is something you'll be able to consistently do potentially scale beyond making your first thousand pounds you can use it to you know eventually get to 10 15k a month i just want you to get that first grand see that first thousand pounds just landing in your pocket it feels amazing it feels so 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 good even now when we start a new funnel or a new series of ads and i see a first sale come in or a first booked call that i know can be worth five ten fifteen thousand pounds i still get a buzz out of that it's a great feeling so as soon as you get that under your belt that way to make that first thousand pounds thousand dollars you can apply this to whatever currency unless you're in zimbabwe that would probably be about 750 million zimbabwean dollars your currency is absolutely goose guys but whatever it is as soon as you can do it once you can emulate it over and over again so money i'm gonna say you're probably gonna have around 10k to be able to do nah 10k shut up zero all these things zero, but what I am going to expect is that you are going to make this work through sweat. I call this sweat equity. Happens in partnerships and stuff as well. If you've watched my partnership video previously, you may understand this. Sweat equity is massive. You may not have the money to put into something. You may not have the skills, the expertise. You're going to need to be able to absolutely bust your balls all right that's me just being honest here if you want to get to that point you're able to make a thousand pounds online you're able to emulate that to make an extra two three k a month you're able to do it from a laptop do it at home while studying alongside a job you know if you've got a normal job like just, i'm talking like just a regular salary in the uk you're making 25k a year you're able to add an extra three thousand pounds a month you're getting a salary double up straight away right you'll be able to add you're taking your income from 25k to 60k a year if you're able to do that in your spare time on your laptop and by the way i've broken down how long these things are going to take you to do and everything the places you can find potential people to do business with this is going to be super simple and easy i always say that when you're in this stage you need to be mr muscle remember the mr muscle adverts back in the day it's like the drain cleaner, the bleach thing. What was the Mr. Muscle slogan? Mr. Muscle loves the jobs they hate. That's what you need to be like sometimes. If you're in a position where you're looking to make that first big thousand pounds online in a business freelancing, you have to understand that you're going to need to eat some shit sandwiches sometimes. You're going to need to be able to deal with rejection. You're going to be having to be willing to put yourself out there a little bit to cold call to cold message it's not the best most efficient way of marketing but if you want to get to a point where that skill set starts to pay and it's not going to cost you much to be able to do it then yeah that's what we're doing here you need to be able to be willing to actually work hard and put yourself out there if you're not and you're looking for something like hey richard i want something that takes me four minutes per day i'm going to make 10k a month i don't ever need to speak to anyone it's totally automated Go away onto someone else's channel where they're bullshitting you and talking nonsense, right? This is real world skills that you can apply. By the way, you can probably do all four of these. Make yourself a couple thousand pounds a month straight away. No problem, right? So let's get into it. Okay, so idea number one that's going to help you get to that 1k per month. Something that's kind of popular just now at the moment, I would say. I would definitely not say it's oversaturated because so many people aren't using it. And this is actually a service that I personally pay for every single month. And guess how much I pay for it every single month? around about a thousand pounds right so i know that this service can carry this cost and that's not someone who's working full time for a thousand pounds by the way it's someone who fulfills the service for me i pay them between five hundred thousand pounds every month and it's super simple they deliver it really easily this is copywriting 
right? Now, a lot of people are confused on what copywriting actually is because throughout our lives, we hear the term copyright and you think like legal rights and ownership to something. Oh, that music's copyrighted. See the key difference here? It's a W and the lack of the GH and stuff. This is copywriting. So what copywriting is, is, you know, the captions on your social media. That's a form of copy, a social copy. The writing that goes along with your ads, that's ad copy. Websites, all the content makes up your website, that's web copy. Your email marketing campaigns, even if you don't do email marketing campaigns, maybe you are part of my mailing list or someone else's mailing list, that's email copy. Anything that is written online for your business or your personal brand is copywriting. It can be super time and efficient for business owners. I used to have to do all of my own email marketing campaigns. I do about 28 email campaigns every single month. It's a lot. When I was doing that myself, trying to maintain the high quality and stuff like that, it would take me hours and hours every single week. Would I still get it done? Yes. Was it really inefficient and I wish I didn't have to put that time into doing the copywriting? Absolutely. So already you've got a little bit of an angle and leverage here in the sense that solopreneurs and smaller business owners and digital creators that you'll be able to see online and find loads of, they don't actually want to do this stuff. So copywriting as a skill, I'm going to talk about some places where you can find jobs like I'm talking about here that's going to be able to get you to that thousand pounds per month. I'm also going to let you know the easiest way how you can become an expert copywriter inside of the next 30 minutes playing about with AI. So don't, like I said, I've already said no skills, no expertise. I'm going to show you exactly how to do these things. So one of the best platforms you can find for copywriting work where you can promote yourself as a freelancer is a little platform called Fiverr with two hours. You can also use platforms like Upwork and stuff like that as well, but Fiverr is often the best. Now, you're going to get an average price, I'll show you here in the video, add a little screenshot in, of between 70 to £105 per copywriting job. Each copywriting job could take you an hour, two hours, a couple of hours, depending on how much they want, that price will increase. So straight away, you can already see that just based on the averages, you only really need to pick up maybe 10, 15 of these jobs every single month to make sure that you hit your thousand pounds. And you're sitting here thinking, Richard, I've not written website copy before. I've not written ad copy. I've not, you know, built email campaigns for people. I tend to find, by the way, email campaigns is the most profitable way of copywriting for business owners that's generally who you're going to be targeting there's not many people that just cut about with email lists for a laugh right it takes up so much time for the business owners that that's normally the most profitable now you may be thinking richard i'm not great at writing i'm not great at putting messages across for people hey ho this is what we're going to use we're going to use chat gpt to be able to fulfill this right we use things on chat gpt that i refer to as prompts if you can afford it, I know I said zero money, I'm just saying if you can afford it, ChatGPT's premium, kind of plus top tier subscription is like $20 a month, 17 or so pounds. If you can afford it, I would definitely buy it, it just makes the experience a lot better. But if not, you're totally, totally fine. Now, you need to gather some information. Let's say this person says to you, Richard, I want 10 email marketing campaigns this month. I want to pay fifty pounds per email campaign. So it's gonna be a five hundred pounds job from one person and I want to be promoting a new offer inside of my business. Your only job is to gather information. What's the business? What's the offer? Let me find out a little bit more about you. Maybe jump on a call with a person for you know, 25, 30 minutes, write as many notes about them as possible. Go and look at their old content, see the style in which they write, and then it's time to head over to your AI system chat GPT. Utilising this and prompting it correctly, you'll be able to make those 10 email campaigns inside of probably an hour, maybe less, even if you're not experienced with using ChatGPT. Now, how is it we actually do this? Well, you're going to input the information you've got from the person into ChatGPT to give the system an understanding of who it is you're providing these services for, and through sub-prompting, aka, let's say you ask it to do five of the email campaigns first, you're looking and going, they're not quite right, I don't think they're perfect. Sub-prompting, I'll give you an example. You would say to the system, rewrite these emails as a world-class copywriter. Ah, so you don't have to go and learn how to become a copywriter and be the best in the world. And by the way, these people who are using this service, if they wanted to have an in-house expert copywriter, they would be spending 35, 40,000 pounds a year on the salary. They probably don't have the budget to do that. So they're not expecting you to be the greatest, most incredible, most fast, efficient, unbelievable copywriter in the world. They're wanting you to save them time. That's it. So using prompts like write this like a world-class copywriter, make this readable in under 60 seconds at an average pace. The reason we do that is because people don't want to read massive amounts of 
content inside of the emails. Write this in British English. Write this so it can be understood by a 10-year-old. Simple content always wins. These are just daft little prompts that we use to make sure that our copywriting is the best. You land one client that's going to give you 10 email campaigns a month. Eight, let's say they do it for 25 quid an email. All you need is four people to make a thousand pounds a month. Now, based on what I know about what people pay on Fiverr, what I have paid myself, and how long I think it would take you to make your first thousand pounds, well, inside of a month, if you are messaging people on Instagram, you know, set up your social media, take your personal profile, don't go make a new profile. I hate when people do this. You put in your bio, you know, I copyright for businesses, I save business owners. 20, 30 hours per week on copywriting services. Reach out to people. You're going to have to message people constantly. Hey, I would love to do a free bit of copywriting for you. Let me know what email campaigns you've got coming up. I'm going to write an awesome email for you and send it over to you. No obligation. Just go and use it. And if you like my services, we can talk about maybe paying for it in the future. You're going to need to do stuff like that. Go out there sweating, Mr. Muscle style. Put yourself on Fiverr. Promote yourself on Instagram. Message people. And you're going to get rejection. You're going to get... That in your face, right? You need to just deal with it. This is business. I would say that it's going to take you around about 35 hours inside of your first month to make a thousand pounds. Based on my calculations, knowing what I spend on copywriting, what is being charged in the marketplace for copywriting, having to message people and get rejected and have people that say yes, that maybe pull out 35 hours and this will drastically decrease every single month. So when you think about it, how long is the average work week? Average what week is what, 40 hours? Technically on contract, 37.5 hours because you don't get paid for half your lunch or whatever it is, right? 35 hours to make a thousand pounds. If I came to you and said, whatever job you're doing right now, I said to you, hey, do you want to work 35 hours a week and get paid a thousand pounds for it? 90% of people in the world would be like, yeah, of course. Push you on 50 odd thousand pounds per year. You're working a couple hours less per week than the average person. Awesome. So as this time drops down, or you keep this time up because you're taking on more clients, this is where this starts to become 10,000 plus. You're able to go out there, provide these services for clients, get better at it over time, and you're utilizing AI to actually complete the service. This right here, copywriting, is one of the most efficient ways you can hit your first 1,000 pounds online today. So moving on now to option number two, and by the way, in case you hear some roadworks outside, I'm sweating so much that my boxers have changed colour, so I've had to open this window because it is so hot in here and I don't want to take this off because I imagine I'm wearing a grey t-shirt when I take this off. I'm going to have big sweat patches. I'm going to look like your average physics teacher and I don't want to do that. Option number two. S-M-M. Social Media Management. It's one of the simplest easiest, most efficient ways to make your first thousand pounds online. Now, very similar, so you're going to see a kind of reoccurring theme sometimes. A lot of what we're talking about here can be done on directories and places like Fiverr and Upwork. You're going to get a lot of opportunity to work on there. Bear in mind, you will be competing against people that will always do stuff cheaper, so you're not trying to get into that race to the bottom. Whatever you think you're worth, stick to your value, provide a good service, that's what's going to pay off in the long term. You don't want to be kind of getting beaten down, oh this guy will do it for £20, okay I'll do it for 15 like, You don't really want to be in that situation, but we can find a lot of different jobs on Fiverr, Upwork and also cold messaging on Instagram, cold emailing. It is not the nicest way to do things, it's not the most fun way to do it, but there is money hiding in the phone calls and the emails and the messages that you've not yet made. Now, in my own experience and also my experience of friends, um, for example, my mate Antonio, he pays for a freelance social media um, management service for his restaurants. Looking at the time that it takes that company to fulfill it, the costs associated and kind of how many posts they're putting out there, which isn't like a huge amount. I think he pays somewhere in the region of a thousand pounds per month just for his restaurant. So. It's pretty easy to see how this is scalable. You can get to £1,000 per month. Now, what does social media management actually entail? Loads of people say they're a social media manager and end up accidentally writing themselves into doing absolutely everything and being way beyond what I'm saying in Mr. Muscle, right? Doing stuff that you just should not be doing. Social media management is not ads. It is not running ads. If, unless you have experience running ads, please, from someone who would consider themselves not too bad at digital marketing, do not run ads unless you are a media buyer. Unless you are an ads manager, you're experienced, you've went done it, maybe you've paid for some training from a, a, like a digital marketing expert, then you've got a chance, but don't run ads. So people, social media management, all you're doing is creating posts that can be on 
Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, like any social media platform, right? You are creating posts, you are creating captions, and you're uploading. That's it. And you would be thinking, Richard, that seems so easy, right? If it was that easy, we wouldn't have like 80% of business owners. And I know this is a fact because of what we do at Growth Gears. We wouldn't have like 80% of business owners with no up-to-date posts for over 12 months on the Instagram accounts. I go on to so many businesses that apply to come and be part of the Growth Gitters program, which by the way, if you are one of those business owners, you want to find out more about what we do at Growth Gitters, click the link in the bio, you get loads of information there. We have so many come and say, oh, I want to do more on social media, I want to do this and that, and they have like you know different ideas they want to you know put forward online, and I go into social media, they haven't posted for over a year. If this stuff was that easy, and people, you're caught up wanting, you need to do an invoice, you're running away to this, and a last minute call comes in, this stuff is secondary to business owners. It's, a, it's optional. To me, it's not. It's essential. But it's optional as whatever. I either go to this job or I stop and do my social media. What option are you going to pick? It's not going to be stopping and doing the social media. So here, you're designing the post. You can use stuff. When we go back to ChatGPT, you can use stuff like DALI. It's like an image generation platform. You can use things like Ad Creatives AI, Luca, all these different platforms that allow you to generate images for people. There's also different video editors you can use. I mean, looking just now at the Sora system that's been brought out by OpenAI, I'm not sure how buggy that's going to be, but you're able to make incredible video very, very, very quickly. Even with apps like CapCut, if you're familiar with TikTok, you'll see the CapCut app is affiliated with TikTok. I'm pretty sure that they own it um, and it's used by a lot of people to create videos online. You can have the appearance of a pretty solid video editor just by using CapCut. That's why Gary behind the camera, he doesn't know this, but it's actually his last day. He's, he's leaving today and he's not going to have a job in. Because <laughs> we're, we're, we're moving everything on the cap cut. Um, but the point I'm making is, obviously, with us, we put out so much media. We do so many online courses. We try and keep our YouTube content as you know high quality as possible. So I love having videographers and high quality camera kit. But realistically, to provide base level social media services with a smartphone, a couple of AI systems... Using CapCut to edit your videos, you don't need to have any expert skills. And there's amazing YouTube channels out there, like best CapCut editing tricks, best, you know, strategies for editing short form video. You can find so many skills online for free. So you go forward to business owners, you say to them, hey, I'm looking at your social media just now. You've not posted for the last eight weeks. You've got no stories up to date. I would love to come and manage your social media for you. I'm going to make all of your content. I'm going to generate all of your captions. I'm going to schedule everything for you. I'm going to make sure your stories are up to date. Just in case you're wondering, here is my optimum content schedule. I do three posts per week, right? So you do three main page posts on their Instagram, on their Facebook, all that kind of stuff. And I like to do five stories per day, which is actually super easy. So there you go. You already know what you're going to be offering them right now. That's getting a bit messy. Three posts per week, five stories per day. This is exactly what you're going to be offering them. I'm able to come and do all of this for you. You don't need to worry about it whatsoever. I'm going to put this out. If you want to add in replying to messages, if you want to add in replying to comments, you can add that in as well as an extra service. For every single business you do this for, I would be saying a minimum of 500 quid per month. So you only need two people. Two people. Now, it's a bigger ticket on the face of it. Like, I'm, what I mean by bigger ticket is it's more expensive, right? That's just a telling people you're using business. It's a bigger ticket when you look at, like, a small copywriting job for 200 quid or whatever it may be. And you're going to probably get more rejection on this as well, which isn't easy to take and it's not fun. But we need to be in this real hustle mode, this hashtag grindset. I hate that, but it is true. To be able to get these types of clients, all you need is two people. And that's going to get you a £1,000. Now, in terms of fulfilling the service, having a little play about with the video editing stuff, having a little play about with the AIs, this here, I'm going to say is probably in your first month to hit that thousand, you're probably going to be about 40 hours. The great thing about that is, is that I would say the majority of that is actually probably outreaching to clients. It's outreaching to them, speaking to them. All our social media platforms, by the way, have scheduling tools built into them. We don't need to use stuff like, I think it was Hootsuite that people used to use back in the day and stuff like that. It was absolutely... It was terrible, right? All the social medias have scheduling tools. So you could sit on a Monday, be super focused for four or five hours and schedule the social media content for the next two weeks for one business in four or five hours. Think about that two weeks, that's 250 quid. If you think about it in terms of, let's say it took you five hours, 
it's an effective rate of 50 quid an hour. You get five, six clients on that, you're making two, three thousand pounds per month. And it's not taking you a huge amount of time. Super scalable, super easy. You're going to need to message a lot of people to make sure your service gets put out there. But this right here, in terms of being scalable, I would say it's more scalable than copywriting. Maybe a little bit harder at the start, but no expert skills needed. You can get all the skills that you might need to offer extra services like video editing, basic video editing, and get it all on YouTube completely free. So this right here is another super strong way to make that first thousand. So skill number three, you might kind of, if you're a little bit sharper, you may have put this together maybe from the last one we're talking about with social media management. And I was kind of focusing, not focusing, I mentioned a little bit about, you know, editing video for people, because by the way, Video is the highest performing type of social media content, especially short video. When you see YouTube shorts, when you see TikToks, Instagram reels, these are still the highest performing types of social media content. Uh, they can take a little bit of time to do and become good at for the average business owner, and that's why it often gets neglected. So what I want to talk about quickly is short form video editing. So I'm just going to write short form here, because I can't be bothered around short form video editing. It's too long, right? So short form video I think is a really easy way to get to making over a thousand pounds a month. But what you need to think about is this is often going to work with people who are putting out content. And you also, there's a little thing in here that we edit the short form video, but we need to get people to record it, right? That's the one thing I want you to keep in mind. I'm trying to be as transparent and honest as possible. I could go short form editing. You can get, you know, five thousand pounds a month for short form. It's super easy. Bing, right? But people do need to sit down and record content. Not everyone is comfortable getting in front of the camera and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you how we can edit the stuff easily. How we can repurpose other content that people already have. And give you a little marketing trick on how I ended up registering with someone for a short form video editing service. So this managed to work on me. I'm sure it'll work on many other people as well. So we already touched on CapCut, right? We can use CapCut to edit really nice short form videos. We can use apps like Captions. Total transparency, captions cost £50 per year, right? £50 per year is not a lot of money, right? Captions helps you fix audio, eye contact, puts captions in, sound effects, intros, outros, emojis, everything. So it is a really good app, but CapCut is free, right? So if we want to stay super true to the Richard, you said no skills, no expert skills, no money, totally fine. Don't worry about it. You can still use CapCut. And like I said before, jump on YouTube, watch some tutorials. It's going to make this a lot easier. So using CapCut, I'm just going to, just for the avoidance of any doubts, you know what I'm saying? This allows you to help edit people's videos. So someone would, you know, take a couple of videos of themselves speaking, send it to you on G Drive or WeTransfer or one of these kind of systems, and you would then go and edit it for that person, right? Now, let's say that person is already putting a lot of video out there and you think, you know, I could save them a lot of time by doing this, or maybe they're using someone else and I may be able to do the service a little bit cheaper. You're just hustling here, right? You're just trying to make some money. So this person has loads of YouTube videos, like me, for example. I've got loads of YouTube videos, which if you're watching just now is in a landscape format 16 by 9 is the actual is it aspect ratio is that what we call it gary boom what do you know about video baby not as much as me all right aspect ratios in that boom right so that's the format you see it in but what are shorts in well they're in 9 by 16 it's like a kind of portrait way that they do it so people need their content repurposed and i'm going to give you a little example of an amazing system here called opus clip right opus clip you can take a youtube link Upload the YouTube link into Opus Clip, click go, and it's going to resize, and the AI understands the conversation. It knows how the sentences flow, it knows how the conversations start and stop, and it's going to be able to, in under 60 seconds, generate you, depending on the length of the video, let's say it's someone's podcast, it's going to be able to generate you somewhere in the region of 20 different clips. Now, sometimes there's a couple of crap ones in there, so let's say it was 15. Within the space of two minutes, you've got 15 fully edited fully captioned short form videos ready to upload on social media or in your case ready to sell to a business owner who maybe has no idea about this kind of stuff right you haven't had to sit down and use a system like premiere pro which by the way is what gary and zane and all the team in here use which when i look at it, it is so complex it is it's like it blows my mind looking at it it's absolutely nuts You've been able to just upload this stuff into an ai system and be given all these videos or spend a little bit of time on CapCut to do it now 
This is very similar to these other options. I would say that this is probably 25 to 30 hours. So this is a little bit less than the other options um, because I think it's easy to excite people with this. In terms of jumping into someone's you know, DMs and saying, hey bro, I've got a copywriting service. So hey, I, I love your business. I'd love to manage your social media. We can do something pretty cool with this. So if this person already has video on their Instagram or their Facebook, or they already have some video on YouTube, one of the best ways to do this, grab the content and generate them a free video. Make the one free video with captions, make it a real solid video, do the captions on it, do the editing, do some cool after effects, do some cool stuff on CapCut that you've learned through a YouTube tutorial, make them a really solid first video and send it to them on Instagram. Say, hey, I love your content. I'm a short form video editor. I've edited you the short video from one of your podcasts or one of your other videos or what it may be. This is how I ended up signing up with a short form video editor previously. They sent me followed the video. I was like, all right, okay, I'll watch this. And I watched it and I was like, oh, I actually kind of like that. How much is your service? Guess how much the service was? A thousand pounds a month, right? One client, a thousand pounds a month. I was getting 12 videos for that every single month. I said, yeah, cool, no problem. I signed up for the service, paid for it. And I used that service for a few months until we got some extra video editors inside of the office. So for those couple of months, I was spending a thousand pounds every single month with that person for 12 videos. If they needed four or five clients, or if they got four or five clients, it's 5K a month, right? And they're doing most of this with AI to trim down the videos and then cap cut. You don't even need a laptop to do this. You can do this all on your phone. If you're someone who's sitting you're like, Richard, I can't even afford to buy, never mind a MacBook or some of the stuff that we use, and here's all Apple that we use for the editing. You're like, Richard, I can't afford that. An iPad, I couldn't even go and get myself a second hand one for like 150, 200 quid. You can do this all on your phone. Android, Apple, doesn't matter. You can do this on your phone. Hustle your way in, make a little bit of money over the next couple of months, go and buy that MacBook. Next thing you know, you're able to build up a little short form video editing agency. This could take you, I actually think in my opinion, this or the social media management is definitely the most scalable out of the three that I've given you just now. Certainly, they're going to go and make you that first thousand pounds, but in terms of scalability and getting to a point where you're making an extra two, three, four, let's be honest, 10k plus per month, you could do that inside of a, a year, 18 months with any of these things, but I definitely think these last two are the most scalable. You don't need to be an expert video editor. In fact, you don't need to be a video editor whatsoever, to be totally honest. And you can go out there and you can edit their short form. But what I would say is, though, don't offer to edit the long form. There's lots that goes into editing YouTube videos and the camera setups that we've got here and all that kind of stuff. Short form is key. Send it over, give them a little free video, say to them, you know, if you don't want to use my service, feel free to upload it. Nine times out of ten, they're going to upload it. If it's better quality than what they're already uploading, they're going to get more interaction. Social media is like crack, to be honest. So when they get more likes than average, more views than average, they're going to come back. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I did get some more views there. So what's the cost of your service? It's a really easy way to give them a little bit of value. It's only going to take you 10, 15 minutes to edit that clip. You do that 10 times a day for a couple of different businesses or creators. Over the course of a week, I'd like to think you maybe land one or two clients. Even if they only grab a couple of videos off you per month for two or three hundred pounds at a time, you keep doing this, keep repeating that process over the next six to eight weeks, you're going to get to a thousand pounds per month. So idea number four, really popular kind of viral skill set at the moment. Loads of people are talking about it. Super, super scalable. Like, I mean, super, super scalable. But there is a little caveat and risk that the rest of them don't have. And we'll get into that in a second. So option number four is setting. Also known as appointment setting, right? But I just refer to it as setting. I refer to the people that do it as setters. We have them inside of our business as well. Our setter probably makes around about 750 quid a month, something like that, depending on how busy he is. And also depending on the performance of other people in the business, that is the caveat. This is linked to other people's performance nine times out of 10. So let's explain this just now. So what do setters actually do? Well, think about this in a business. This is a person here who is potentially going to buy our service. They find out about you know us on Instagram or our website or something like that and they decide that they are going to book an appointment with our business. They want to talk about buying that kitchen or bathroom or they want to talk about using our social media marketing agency, whatever it may be. None of that stuff matters to you. You don't need to be an expert on any of that stuff just now and I'm gonna explain that in a second. They would go and they would want to book a, I'm gonna try and draw a phone here, Gary. So this this is me drawing a phone. That's a pretty, nah. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know those vices used to get in techie? 
<laughs> you could like wind up, that's what it looks like. <laughs> this is a phone. So they're gonna get the phone call with the salesperson who's gonna hopefully close them and make the business some money. So this is the kind of process here, but sometimes when we look at prospects, maybe it's not the right time for them. So they're, they're not looking to actually buy until later this year, they're just shopping around just now. Maybe they don't have complete affordability and they don't know if you offer finance options or payment plans. There's some things there that are unknowns about this person before they get into this sales process that we could really find out about and save the salesperson some time because guess what in my business and in your business if you are a business owner and you're just watching this for fun salespeople should be doing what selling that's it Th that's all they should be doing they shouldn't be doing anything else they my salespeople they don't do invoices they don't do anything other than selling on the phone sending the person terms and conditions get it signed everything else is done by the office staff or it's automated as soon as the invoice as soon as their customer details are put inside our system click invoices get sent to them right all they should be doing is selling 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 that's what you have a salesperson for so it's so annoying if you've ever I had to do all my own sales for years because i didn't have money to bring in the salesperson i was probably too stubborn and thought i was the best salesperson in the world as well but i done all my own sales for years so when you have someone come in and they're talking to you on the phone or you're talking away to them you're like okay so you know what type of business do you have oh i don't have a business oh well you know, we only work with business owners here. Oh yeah, no, I was looking to find out um, how is it you do this and how do you make money? And right, okay, dud call. Beep. You, next call was going to be better. You pick that up. Yeah, you know, what type of business have you got? Oh, I've got this type of business. Okay, cool. So what's your kind of marketing budget per month? Oh, I'll never spend money on marketing. I was just wondering if I could ask you a couple of questions. These are the situations you find yourself in. You could have 100 sales calls in a week, right? Which is really unlikely, but I'm just using that as a random number. And 80 of them could be absolute non-starters at the beginning. Would it not be better to know that 80 of them are absolute crap so you focus on the 20 they could actually make you money? This is where the settles come in. Now, you come in round about this kind of part here. So they're not getting into this section here. They're not speaking to a salesperson yet. I like to refer to setting as triage. What triage means is you're finding out kind of pre-qualification potential issues before that person goes into the sales call. Very simple things that you're looking to find out. You're looking to find out, are they a decision maker? So, if they're buying a service, are they the person that can actually make the decision? Oh, I need to speak to my wife. I need to speak to my business partner. Or I need to ask my friend. We don't want to have any of that when they end up on a sales course. We're trying to find out, are they a decision maker? Do they actually have the affordability? Are they in a position just now where they can afford the service? Hey, you know, like... You've seen our service online, we produce the best kitchens in the UK, or we're one of the best social media marketing agencies in Scotland, or whatever it may be. As you can imagine, you know, we charge for our service. Some of our kitchens can be between 3000 and sometimes over £20,000, depending on what you want. Are you in a position where you can actually make a decision to spend that money on a kitchen just now? Yeah, 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 we're in the market just now, we've got a budget of around about £5,000. Awesome, okay, cool. You meet that criteria. We're also going to see, is it the right time? Are you actually looking to buy just now? Is this something you're looking at doing in six months? One of the things I love saying, or love coaching my setters to say is, you know, why did you book this call today? You're going to book this call in six months. You could have booked it six months ago. Why is today the day you're booking this call? Oh, I don't know. I was just checking about it. I was just wondering if there was uh, maybe something we could buy later on in the year or potentially get the answer. Oh, I booked this call today because we're at a point now where it's really time for us to change our kitchen. Like, it's really dated at the moment. Oh, we're moving into a new house and we want to change the kitchen. This is something we're looking to do very soon. Great, you're pre-qualifying this person. So we end up in this situation where there are good leads and there's not so good leads. Now we don't totally burn the not so good leads and a great business, what you would be doing is putting them into some automations where they're getting automated emails, little text reminders now and then so that when they are ready to purchase that service or ready to think about purchasing from you, you're still the forefront of the mind of remembering who you are. But all you're doing is jumping on simple 15 minute calls with people you don't need any expert knowledge about the product. So you're not there to answer questions about the product. All you're there to do is spend a little bit of time finding out more about the prospect. Here's an example of how you might start one of these calls. And this is what we do with our sales. Hey, look, it's Richard here. I'm calling from XYZ Business Services just now. It's great to speak to you today. Look, I want to let you know that we've got a specific task we're looking to complete inside of this call today. 
I'm not here to answer in-depth questions about the services you're looking to purchase or, you know, the different things that we do at XYZ Business Services. We've got a strict criteria today that I want to follow. I'm just going to ask you a couple of simple questions so that I can put you through to the best possible expert inside of our business to get you the best solution. Do you mind if we just stick to that criteria today and any questions we save for your next call? Yeah, no problem. Sweet. And if they choose not to do that, A, remember, we set those expectations at the start of the call. We don't want to go off into something else. I'm trying to make sure that I get you through to the best expert in our business. Super easy to go back to that and handle that objection, right? All you're going to be saying to us is, look, you can build. Guess where you can build a script? Oh, my goodness. Guess where you can build a script? Chat GPT, right? I'm working as a setter for this type of business and this type of industry going on calls with these types of people, can you give me a base idea for a script and key questions that I would ask these people to make sure that I'm setting the best possible appointments for the sales team? Boom, you've got a script there straight away. So I was just wondering, you know, you got in contact with us today. Why is today the day that you wanted to book a call with us? You know, you could have booked in six months' time, 12 months' time. Are you in a position right now where you're actually looking to action something with our business? Yeah, so, and that's where you start this process. Now, payment. You're going to get... I find that because our front end marketing is really good, we probably only get about 10% goes into here and then 90% lands in here because our front end marketing is good. You may get some shit people. You may get some good people. Now, here's how the payments generally work for setters. You get paid 5% of every deal that is closed. Well, what do you mean deal that's closed, Richard? Because I'm not a salesperson. Like, I'm a setter. I'm not a closer. So how do I get paid on the deals that are closed? Well, if you're setting crap appointments and you're letting anyone go through and you're not really caring if they qualify, they don't qualify for the product, you're just saying, oh yeah, good to speak to you, you want to speak to one of the sales team, no problem, I'll book you in, thanks, and you're setting crap appointments, well, the salesperson's going to be getting more crap appointments, which means they're closing less, which means they're making less money, the business is making less money, so you're going to make less money as well. What it would also mean is if for some reason this business had a really bad closer, like a really bad salesperson, your income would suffer as well. So there are risks here now and then when it comes to appointment setting. The thing about appointment setting is you can do it for a bunch of businesses at one time. Like this is a good thing in terms of going into something full time. Appointment setting is really good to go into full time. But you're going to get 5% of everything that's closed. So let me just make this, give you an example so you can have a look. Let's say that the business you work for, the average product sale is £5,000. Right, And I would say if you're wanting to work as a setter, never be in a business that has an average product price of less than 3k. If they're selling something that's like 500 quid and you're going to get 5% of that, £25 a go and you're meant to sit on the phone and all that, go away, right? This is for high ticket products only. So let's say the average is £5,000. Let's say you take 20 setting calls per week. And out of those 20, you're able to send 15 to the salesperson. And let's say that that salesperson is, is doing not too bad, they're pretty decent, they're able to close five of those people into a 5K product. Let's do some quick maths here. It's 25,000 pounds for the business, right? So 25,000 pounds for the business is pretty good, right? 25,000 pounds, if we look at 5% of that, that's gonna take us to what? £1,250 for the setter. Now, normally you get paid at the end of the month. That's just how this goes. You don't just get paid straight away. You get paid at the end of the month. So you build up your commissions over a couple of weeks. Let's say the next week's crap. You only get five appointments. They're all absolute crappers. You know, one goes through to the salesperson. Look, look at these pound signs I'm able to design. I don't know why the government haven't spoken to me. You want to rebrand and redesign the pound? Bring back some greatness to the British economy? Make us a serious player in the global market again? Yeah, speak to me. That's not AI. That's custom built. Straight from Richard Dixon. So, anyone, chance of the checker? Yeah, phone me, bro. So, then you get one person goes through to the salesperson and they fail. Well, you made zero money that, that week. You took five calls. You spoke to those people. Four of them were crap. One of them went through to the salesperson and didn't close. You made zero. So, depending on how good the closer is, you eat when they eat. So you could do 50 appointments, 45 absolute crackers. You're thinking, yeah, this is going to be a big old week. We're going to make some money. Closes crap. One deal gets closed. One deal for 5k, you make £250. And you've probably had to spend, you know, 50 times 15 minutes. You spend a fair bit of time on the phone for 250 quid. It can be frustrating, right? Now, I'm a reasonable business owner in the sense that 
I believe that people get paid fairly for the work. If I was in that situation and someone in my business had set 45 really decent appointments and I was really disappointed with my closer's performance, I'm probably going to chuck that person, you know, five, six hundred quid anyway, just for saying, you know, well done, you've done really well there, stay motivated, keep pushing on your setting, we're going to improve our closing process. But the setting is one of the best ways to transition into full-time business ownership or full-time self-employment, right? To be able to go there and actually make some decent money and do it full time and make sure your calendar's available do that for a couple of different businesses at a time and and you can make some pretty decent money and guess what i think all of these things option one two three and four you know whether you're doing a a little bit of copy you're doing a little bit of social media management you're doing a little bit of video editing you're doing a little bit of setting a lot of these are complementary services every business needs these even make yourself a little agency that does all of these hey we can come in and you can use VAs and by the way you could also be like okay I'm going to do the setting I'm going to use a guy on Fiverr who's able to do the copy for me for 50 quid I'm going to sell it to the business owner for 100 quid there's a little like you know double up in there for me it's a really nice margin social media management I can get someone who's going to do that for 250 pound I'm going to sell it to the business owner for 400 pound someone do the video editing for me they'll do 12 videos per month for 500 quid well i know that richard used to pay a thousand pound for that so we can maybe do that for a thousand pound and i'm going to do my setting and my average income for my setting when i put a little bit of time into it is going to be let's even just say 1500 quid across a month boom straight away you've got 1500 quid you've got another little 500 quid in here that's 2k you got a little 150 quid in there boom and that's only for like one account you can have a bunch of accounts in there so that's you at 2150 quid and if you get 10 copywriting jobs like this it's an extra 500 pound boom you're on your way to getting 3k a little agency offer where you can offer full scope for people and that is how you're going to be able to go and start generating money online all of the little ai systems that i mentioned briefly throughout here some of them for the best possible versions of those systems you pay money but every single one has a free version and that free version i guarantee you is going to be enough to get you to that glorious one thousand pounds per month and then we're going to look to start scaling, build yourself a little agency, build yourself a little, you know, full scope business service. We can edit your videos, we can do your copy, we can take 20, 30 hours away from you every single week. How could you use that in your business to generate more money? And you only need to pay me a measly £3,000 per month. Do that for a couple of businesses, boom. You're on your way to your first 100k a year. How awesome is that? Hope you enjoyed this video. It's been slightly longer than usual, but that's because we're trying to throw as much value at you as possible to make sure you have as much information as I can possibly give you to go away and actually put this stuff to work. Let me know if you enjoyed it down below. Hope you have a good day. Let's go out. Let's get hustling. Let's get on Fiverr. Let's get cold messaging. Let's get doing the things that other people don't want to do because we want to have results that they're never going to be able to achieve. Peace. <laughs>